Hello, I'm Jake Raby. I'd like to welcome you to Flat 6 Innovations. Today, I'm going to be walking you through the installation of the LN Engineering Deep Sump Kit. This is something we use on all of our engines that we build here at Flat 6 that are performance oriented. And certainly, we've seen some big benefits of using this in our test vehicles. So let's get started by reminding you to always keep a clean work area and always be safe. If you're working underneath your vehicle, always have jack stands. If you're working on ramps, yet again, support the vehicle in at least two different manners. Always got to be safe, always got to be clean. Okay, so let's get started with a familiarization of the kit components and also the tools you'll be needing to do this installation. Okay, this is the deep sump spacer. This is one quarter inch thick water jet cut aluminum. This is actually what comprises the deep sump kit. This is what will give you one half quart of added oil capacity in your engine sump. When you space the oil pan down, we've included a spacer. And this billet aluminum spacer will space the oil pickup tube down deeper in the pool of oil by the same difference as the thickness of this deep sump spacer, as you can see. So a lot of the other kits on the market do not do this. They space the oil pan down, but they do not move the pickup tube with it. These are a couple of O-rings that will go on either side of this spacer, like so. You'll see that a little later on in the production. And this is also a spacer that will move the factory oil baffle up one quarter inch. So as you move everything else down, you're moving the baffle up so the baffle stays seated against the top of the, of the uh, sump around the crank scraper area. This is needed for oil control. Got a few pieces of hardware to go along with that here. And then we have several fasteners, nuts, bolts, washers, the things that will go around the perimeter and also hold the pickup tube in because now these have to be thicker by one quarter inch. Okay, now that we've gone over that, let's get right into some tools you'll be new, needing to do this job. Okay, as you can see, there's not a lot of tools going to be necessary for this. I chose a 10 millimeter quarter inch drive socket with a short extension and a quarter inch drive ratchet. Also, I've chosen an 8 millimeter hex socket on a 3 inch drive extension to remove and replace the stock or factory oil drain plug. If you have the Ellen Engineering heavy duty magnetic drain plug, you'll need to use this 10 millimeter hex, which is a lot larger, as you can see. That's one of the good things about it. It keeps it from trying to strip out your drain plug. Also, I've improvised a tool that we're going to use to modify the factory oil baffle. And really, this is just an improvised tool. It's a four millimeter shallow socket. It's got a nice taper on it, and this will allow us to press out some inserts in the factory oil baffle. You can pretty much engineer anything that you have, have the need to to do this job, and we'll be showing you that a little bit later on. A fairly large standard blade screwdriver. This will be used to dislodge your factory oil pan because it's been there since your car was new. And also a Dremel tool. This is going to be used to also modify your factory oil baffle, which is plastic. We have to move a few things around inside the baffle, and this is going to be used to facilitate that. Also, we've got some thread locker. This is Loctite 242. This is medium strength. We're going to be using this on all the perimeter bolts and all the other fasteners. And then we have Loctite 518. There's also a Porsche uh, recommend, recommended product called Dry Bond they also can be used, but this is personal preference. I've got extensive experience with this sealant. I use it for a tremendous amount of applications, and this is by no means a recommendation. It is just my personal preference. You can do some research on the Loctite 518 as well as the Dry Bond and make your own decision as to which product you would like to use. Okay, so with that, let's get into installation. Okay, before we get started with the removal of the engine's oil pan, and the engine's oil, I want to bring your attention to the Ellen Engineering spin-on oil filter adapter that has been installed on this engine. This will look different than your vehicle unless you already have one of these units installed. So I just wanted to go ahead and make that clear now. So you want to go ahead and remove the oil from the engine. 
brake torque on your drain plug, introduce your means of collecting the oil, allow this to drain for a couple of seconds here. Okay, now once your stream has gotten about the size of this one, you want to go ahead and allow it to drain a little longer to get all the residual oil out of the pan because you're going to be pulling the pan off. So the more residual comes out, the less messy the job is going to be for you. Okay, so you can see we've got a small stream of oil. It takes another, you know, probably about 45 minutes for all this oil to drain out. I mean, if your car is not setting absolutely level, you can have some residual on one side of the pan over this direction or over here. So make sure the car is level and that you also don't have the angle of the vehicle altered. If you've got the vehicle setting on a hill like it's on ramps and you're going to have more oil getting caught up in this area here on the front, toward the front of the car. Of course, if you've got a 996, that's going to be back toward this area more. But if you can get the car level and still remain, continue to drain the residual oil from the pan, that's the key. Now that the majority of our oil is drained, you just want to go ahead and remove all your perimeter bolts. Okay, we've got one more fastener to remove. And unless your pan has been off recently, more than likely, it's not going to be dislodged without a little bit of effort and some prying. So more than likely, you can take all the perimeter fasteners out around it, and it's still not going to come out of place. Once you've gotten this, you want to go ahead and get yourself a much wider means of of catching the oil. Uh, as you can see here, our unit is wide all the way across. It goes across the width of the pan. So if you're doing this without the luxury of a lift, you want to make sure that you've got some means to catch the extra oil that's going to come from the entire width of this unit. You will find a tab that's made for prying this oil sump pan off the engine here. On a 996, it's going to be on the passenger side. On a Boxster, it's going to be on the driver's side. After you've located this, you want to use a large screwdriver, like the standard big blade screwdriver I've got here, and go ahead and attempt to dislodge the pan, like so. Once you've dislodged it a little on, the, on one side, you'll be able to, more than likely, just condense it down. Do not use your screwdriver to damage this surface. If you do that, you will have a serious oil leak. You may have a little bit of, of body interference here, like what we've had. As you can see, we've got some residual oil. Okay, and then you just want to condense this out of the vehicle. Okay, once you've maneuvered it around a couple of the pieces of the fairings underneath the vehicle, it'll come off like so. And this will expose the oil baffle and the oil control windows. And now we'll be removing this and taking it to go give it a thorough cleaning before installing the deep sump kit. This particular deep sump kit from Ellen Engineering has a quarter inch thick spacer that comes with it. This is pretty much unique to the Ellen Engineering arrangement. And it, this spacer is designed to move the pickup tube down one quarter inch, which will make that coincide with the deep sump kit's extension. Remove the two fasteners that hold the pickup tube in place. There are two more 10 millimeter fasteners. We're just going to pull those out and then remove the pickup tube in preparation for installation of this spacer. Once again, utilize a 10 millimeter socket, just like we did on the perimeter bolts and remove the pickup tube. Okay. Go ahead and remove both these bolts. Now, you're going to also see some other hardware here. This bolt, this bolt, there's some others inside this area that you shouldn't be concerned with because these go to the defomers and other portions of, inside the oil pan. They're perimeter bolts that hold the case halves together. Leave those in place. Only pull the two fasteners out that are on the pickup tube. Once they're both out, you can simply dislodge it like so. Before we go clean this unit, we're going to inspect it for, for cracks. And then as we're cleaning it, we're also going to inspect it for cracks. So look for cracks all around this area. These are plastic components. And over time, heat, oil temperature, and lubricant 
have started to break this plastic down. So inspect this very good for cracks. Also, the rubber portion of this unit also needs to be inspected for any kind of, of oddness, uh, any kind of cracks in the rubber. Uh, as the cars get older, this is going to be more prominent as engine oil is breaking down some of, this, some of these rubber components. So inspect the rubber and plastic components for cracks or deformations.